it's Gav here from danceplanet.tv. Thanks for joining me as always. And I'm super excited because I've got the awesome Mace DAs, Chris Mason, on the show with me today talking darts. So the other thing I wanted to say to you all is just before I go any further is I have selected seven of your questions. There was absolutely hundreds that you guys put in. My email was going bananas. There was loads on YouTube. So I have had to select them down to just seven, which I'll be asking in the show because obviously I've got the, my questions that I want to ask Chris myself. But I spoke with Chris and he's a top guy and he said that we can do another show um, in the future where I can ask him all your quick fire questions. So, um, thanks for coming on Chris, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good mate, absolute pleasure. Brilliant, thank you. So I hear, or I heard that you was at the O2 this weekend um, for the big event up there uh, and Team Darts were there, Tracy, with all the prostate cancer and that. Yeah, absolutely fabulous night, brilliantly put on. Uh, massive crowds in <clears throat> Johnny Vegas was yeah, typically so. Johnny Vegas and lots of fun uh, but yeah it was great loads of money raised and uh, a lot of fun and some half decent darts and I waited 18 years for revenge on Anki and I eventually <laughs> got it oh you got revenge <laughs> I was hoping to get up there I just couldn't make it this weekend but they've said that I can go to another one so hopefully I'll get to the next one um, but yeah there's then... definitely the Showtime darts who, who put it on uh, definitely one going up, going on next year. I'm not sure if I'm going to be involved or not, um, or he's going to bring in another group of players. But yeah, absolutely thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, and hope hope I get an invite back next I'm year. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Um, what I want to say is, I know that you've obviously got your own channel out now, To The Point Darts. I tune in. I know it's on a Sunday night normally. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, I just wonder if you could tell some of the other guys about the channel so they um, could subscribe. Yeah, it was just, um, there's, there's, there's lots of, like, well, effectively try and do what you do. They're not obviously not as good as quali what quality that you produce. And, <laughs> you know, to try and compete on that level was going to be tough. And there was never really anything out there that was done live that was really interactive with the dark fans. And uh, I listened to several live dark po uh, boxing podcasts that we okay. discussed earlier. Uh, and I thought, well... Well, why not? I, I, I researched what software was available and, and what technology was out there that I could use. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I've come up with this idea. We're going to be taking live calls so uh, fans can then sort of get in and debate and interact with other fans via yeah, uh, brilliant. YouTube, um, you know, the, like a, the, the question box thing, um, the comments section. So yeah, so it's going to be a, a regular Sunday night, 7 till 9, we'll be uh, reviewing what's ever taken place that weekend in the Premier League, which is obviously on a Thursday, Yeah, brilliant. and reviewing uh, the next Thursday night's Premier League and whatever else is on that weekend. We'll be also looking at uh, darts of all levels, amateur, the JDC stuff, uh, the Challenge Tour, all the BDO stuff as well, local tournaments, uh, anything of any interest that people think uh, they want to come on and discuss. Yeah, it, it, it's you know it's not free for all. It's it's to the point. Let's get some good banter going on in there, though, isn't there? On the shows yeah, that I've seen already, no, there no, really no, is. There's no, the whole thing is you know no ball because yeah, you know it, it you know, doesn't mean you can come on and, and <laughs> cuss and curse because we don't want that or, or argue. Yeah, we want genuine debate from dark fans. You know what it's like. You interact with them. Yeah, um, that you know people now are so interested in. You know what's going on behind the scenes, yeah. and uh, do they like the new ranking systems? Do they like the new the way the Q school's been? There's so much to debate. You know who's been fined recently, and <laughs> yeah, you know, definitely. There's, <laughs> there's, so, there's so much going on in the sport that I felt that there was a, a, a window of opportunity. Definitely, um, and I'm gonna have a bit of fun with it. If it doesn't work, then. Will you be doing set that. shows then, Chris? Like where some weeks you'll maybe doing a certain topic where people can like know in advance and different things and actually, you know, get something together to come onto that show to speak about that in particular or Yeah, I think I know this guy who's gonna build me a website. <laughs> you <laughs> Yeah, um, no worries. Yeah, uh, in time what you know, I am just dipping my toes in it really at the yep. moment. I you know, it's it, it's all my own personal investment and my, and my time obviously. Um if if the feedback's there and the interest there, there will there is going to be a website done. So it'll be sort of a one stop. You click on there, you'll see what we're going to be Fantastic. discussing and debating on on that particular show. Yeah. And like I said, there there will be specials. I'm going to do one 
uh, this week, probably Wednesday night. Oh, excellent. Um, What's that one on? On the, on the just, Unibet Masters? Yeah, just to preview Fantastic. the Unibet, um, some of my tips. We'll have a quick look back at Q School. Yeah. Because uh, obviously that's, that's just, just finished uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, the runners and riders from that, the winners and the losers, <laughs> uh, what it means for the BDO players that have now uh, not got their card, where did they go from point? Yeah. Uh, um, I've heard a few rumours that the PDC are making a, a further announcement, as are the BDO. I don't know the full context of that, but hopefully okay. by the time tomorrow night comes around, I'll know and not. So that'll be uh, worth checking out for the announcement, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, Excellent. There's lots of things going on because, as you know, the players now that you know made that jump from the BDO system were hoping to get a card. The ones that haven't, yeah. where previous years, if, if you were sort of close to that card, they would go down the list to invite you in uh, to fill the 128 on the week- weekend. Okay. Um, but the ones now that didn't finish so far up the field, um, you know, they, they can't even play in the Riley's qualifiers. So, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, they can't they, even go in the Riley's the ones. I thought anybody what? could go in them, no? No, not if you went to Q school. You can't go oh. in the oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah, that- so there's, you know... I'm sure they did look into... I mean, the announcement regarding uh, the UK Open qualifiers, you have to finish in a, a certain inside a certain group. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 128, maybe, something like that. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to have another look. But, yeah, the implications are not quite what a lot of the BDO lads would have expected, I think. So there's, mm. there's lots to discuss. Oh, excellent. Uh, and then, obviously, when the, when the show actually launches properly on a Sunday night, which... Won't be this Sunday because I'm obviously at the Unibet yep. Masters covering that for ITV. Can't Ford. wait for that to start. Can't bloody wait. Love it. Yeah, it's good. it's, it's going to be good. I mean, wait for it. it's one of my. I like this tournament. Some some do like it. Some don't like it. I like it. It's the best 16 players in the world. So our first sort of major of the year. No Phil Taylor. Kim Hoybrick uh, snuck in being in 17th, didn't he? Yeah, the new world champion Rob Cross. Yeah. I mean, that's and then we've got obviously the Premier League, which. Probably on my first show, which will be not this Sunday, next Sunday, uh, we'll have an in-depth look at the Premier League, the opening night in Dublin. Fantastic. Uh, Michael Van Gerwen against Rob Cross. Yes. Wow. Who's going to win that, do you think? Uh, <laughs> Michael Van Gerwen. He will have a point to point, uh, point to prove. He <laughs> um, yeah, he, he wanna, he, he'd have gone away and he'd have been fuming to have lost to Rob Cross. Uh, he lost his world title. Uh, he want to come back and make a statement. Rob Cross, his first tournament, uh, his first night on the Premier League uh, as world champion. Pressure's going to be on in, in front of a Rob... huge crowd in Dublin. Uh, it's going to be a tough night. It and it's not because I don't rate Rob Cross. Everybody that follows me and or see me on TV know I absolutely think he's the bee's knees, but yeah. he's in for a tough night. The only thing I thought with Rob Cross is, he's one of these players that... He's got so much confidence. I remember when they said to him and they interviewed him um, after the world, you know, oh, you've got all these top players talking about you and different things. And he said, well, that doesn't really mean anything to me unless I go out and prove it. And, that the, you know, he, he's, he's seen one of these players has got such confidence. He believes in his own ability. And it's like, oh, you're now going to be ranked number three in the world. And he's like, yeah, but that don't mean nothing to me. I want to be number one. But plays the board and he he don't seem to put a huge amount of pressure on himself. So... Yeah, I think, I, think I, I agree. I think he plays it very well. He's very grounded. You know, I, I, I first met him probably about four years ago, maybe five years ago. And uh, he was he was decent then. Not yeah. Any, like, what he's <laughs> not like is now, now no. He, he's just done an incredible rise. And I think that's why we have, we've seen so many entries in Q School. They now look at what Rob Cross has done. And proved it can be done. changing going to be a multi-millionaire if he's not already um oh, yeah God, fair play to the lad he's a, he's a lovely lovely fella um i think it also just shows that um you know there's always been how difficult it is with the rankings working if you are good enough and you get out there you can do what rob cross has done it's proven it to a lot of people but maybe thought it couldn't be done hasn't it yeah, I mean, he did very well, let's not forget, in the UK Opens when he, he got through those as a rider's qualifier, only stopped by Michael Van Gerwen himself, yeah. uh, who had a tremendous match against him. But uh, he was with Nevada, uh, John Archer, the good management company. Uh, so he was given the finances to basically, OK, I'm going to be a professional dart player. Yeah. The way he's embraced that 
and his work work ethic it is fabulous. I'm not saying you know the opportunities are out there for the PDC, but you also do have to have uh, very deep pockets or someone who's prepared to take a take a punt on you and put put their money where their mouth is. And that's exactly what Nevada did with him. They, how much would you need, Chris? So, sorry, to, how much would you how much would you need to fund it to be able to do that? How, how much are you looking at for his players? Well, well, now, now you've got to, you've got to come through Q School. You've got to go on Challenge Tour. Um, you know, and you you can't do both. The, the BDO got heavily criticised early on by the the typical you know forum fools, as I call them. Yeah. Oh, averages, averages, averages. You know. Rob Cross wasn't doing 40, 50 hours a week. We've seen what kind of dark player he was when he worked. And now yeah. we've seen what kind of dark player... You know, all these players that played in the video system... Gary Anderson didn't set the world on fire. No. Until he joined the PDC. It was his... You know, there's so many great players that we look up to that... If you actually had a look at them uh, pre-turning pro, they yeah. were okay. But uh, not yet. They certainly weren't world beaters because... No. Most of those lads at Lakeside were going to work Monday morning. Yeah. And there's a big difference being able to your 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 life's work being dark. So you have to somewhat you have someone to give you a salary. Yeah, exactly. So, so you want you want twenty grand. Yeah, I mean, you imagine if you've got a young family say to your missus, All right, I'm gonna turn pro. Yeah. Where, where where who's paying the rent? Who's paying the mortgage? Who's paying the bills? Yeah. Um and then you've got that added pressure. If it doesn't work out for you initially and you you know, you start to question that's when things start to go wrong. But listen, the opportunities are there from right from from junior level with JDC to development tour to challenge tour, and then doing what Rob Cross does. He got yeah. his card because he finished. Didn't his uncle kick him out of bed to go to the Riley's qualifier in Norwich? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something exactly. like, I, mean, I thought that was hey, brilliant. How, how, di- how different could things things oh, have been? Unbelievable. But the opportunities are there. Um, so, and, and all credit to him, he grasped them with both hands. He's a, a committed professional player who's worked very hard. It's not, you know, he just didn't pick him up one morning and could hit 110 plus averages. No. You know, he, he's, he's worked his socks off to get his where dedication's he's, where he's unreal, isn't it? Well, yeah. that actually brings me on to another question because I know there's always a lot of debates on this, especially on Twitter or social media um, and different things. Let me just get this question up here. So, an example you're a 16 year old, you've not got a, a sponsor, um, you believe in your ability and want to play darts. Where where would you advise that a 16 year old to go? Would it be to join the BDO and sort of learn their trade to speak or? Go into the the PDC and who's got you know what what would you advise them? Yeah, I'm not sure of the entry criteria, but there's lots of opens. Um, you know, that's how we sort of learnt our trade back okay. in the day was going to knockouts. Uh, you'll always find them. They used to be in the darts. So well, this would be another thing um, that I'll be doing on my show. Maybe we could connect in some ways. Definitely, is, is advertising these these knockouts. Yeah, you know. Sometimes they're like five pounds to enter. Sometimes seven fifty. Sometimes ten pounds. You know, but that's where you'll learn. And they're, you know, although you've got to find, you know, usually you could, you know, there's some. Sometimes there's our uh, Facebook groups with tournaments on and things like that, where people might be travelling from the same area. So you know, you all chip in with a bit of petrol money. That's yeah. what we did. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and and that's where you can sort of learn your trade. And obviously, I think it's seventeen and onwards for the. Uh, development tour in the PDC, so you've got that option. I know the BDO also have a, or, or recently launched a, a new youth system, uh, so there's lots of opportunities out there, and I know when, when money's hard and you're you know, maybe expecting your parents to pay for it. Yes. Me personally, I was working you know, two jobs if I had to, um, and then once you, if you're good enough, you'll yep. start picking up bits of prize money. I used to put that prize money into a pot, and yep. that would fund my next tournament. And then basically, when I built up enough money, I would I would go and try a ranking event. You know, I think the first one I did was the Belgium Open. Um, we did it on the cheap. We went over in my mate's estate car. We slept <laughs> in the car. We didn't even book an hotel. Room. <laughs> yeah. uh, nah, we slept in the car because we couldn't afford a hotel. Awesome. I lost in the semi-final. I think I won about three hundred and fifty quid, something like that. Uh, and then I used that to do. More. Uh, I think I did the the England Open and a few other tournaments and qualified for Lakeside that very same year. So it is doable. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like I say, it's what you put in, it's what you're going to get out of it, isn't it? I think a lot of people now, do, well, I think they have to now, don't they? Do you know what I mean? If you're not going to put the time in, you're never going to get anywhere in darts because the quality is just, it's insane at the moment, yeah, isn't it? It's you can't insane. Win it anymore. Back in my day, you know, I, I could sometimes sort of skip practice for a week. 
you know, and maybe maybe lose, I don't know, maybe 5%, 10% off my top game. Uh, nowadays, you, you, you're looking at putting 5% and 10% yeah. on your top game to be competitive. It's, it's, it's mega tough out there. It is, isn't it? Well, that brings me on to the next question. So how much do you actually miss playing lot on the PD circuit? Obviously, being a top player for years, obviously now doing the commentary and that, do you, you know, do you miss it lots or...? Um, not really. I, I mean, I do some fabulous exhibitions with some with some great promoters. Um, I do a, a huge amount with with, with Jeff Sardin, who, who his company look after Darren Webster, and we do all the the big ones at the holiday camps in front of. You know, the last one we did was three thousand people. So, oh wow! You know, I get my fix. The one at show nights the other night. Um, I'm, not, I'm obviously I'm nowhere near the player I was, but uh, again, it's it's all about me having time to practice. The last month for me has been horrific. I was at, you know, we did the last of the ITV four ones, then I went off and uh, um, I did uh, the, uh, the PDC World Championships for Talk Sport and then I was straight to to uh, yeah, the, BDO World. Yeah, so there's so no time to practice, is there? Bloody hell. Yeah, I'm, I literally have had a month on the road. So for me, it's been very hard to even grab. When I was at Lakeside, I, I managed to grab a couple of hours with with Anastasia, but that was more sort of working, working with her rather than you know of it being any benefit to me. But um, so now for the next couple of months, I'll start doing a bit of practice and and, and see where I am. I'm going to try a couple of the Riley's qualifiers just for uh, research, really more just yeah. to see who goes through. So when I do the coverage for ITV4, I've actually got some first hand. <laughs> Yeah, sort of experience of what it feels like for the players and what it feels like for the guy that qualified. Yeah. Uh, last year, the guy that qualified um, beat me in the semi-final, which was massively annoying because I probably should have got through. Um, so yeah, I'll be playing in a couple of those. Uh, do I? Would you ever do, do Coo School again? Then would you ever go? Would you ever do Coo School again? Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm thinking about it, but basically, what I've got to do is I, I'm going to give myself a month this year uh, to practice every day for a month. If after a few days I get bored or a week I get bored, <laughs> I feel like I can't bother, then I know that desire. Because honestly, yeah, it's, it's gone. It's so tough, and you've just got to be—you've got to be 100 percent dedicated. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't do half a job at this game. You either you're either in it or you're not yeah. in it. And I don't mind not being in it because I still enjoy, you know, the odd little local knockout, a bit of Super League. And I love doing the exhibition. Well, you've got the best of both worlds, really, ain't you? Because if you're not yeah. in it, you're involved with it with the commentator, and you get you get to go to all the big events. You, as you say, your exhibitions. You can you, you've got the best of you everything. Still you still don't lose that competitive edge. And I, although I played okay in parts against Anki uh, uh, for the the big good gig at the O2 uh, two <laughs> nights ago, you know I'm, I was I didn't play very well against Conan, um, and uh, he was sort of waiting for me to get going, and it just you know, you still have that competitive edge, yeah. competitive edge that frustrates you. So even for exhibitions, I'll put in, you know, normally when I've got time, uh, you know, I'll put in a couple of weeks' practice before I get there to make sure I perform. And I played some brilliant ones last year, and um, I played Fordham and, and Martin Adams on, on the same night, and I, I beat Martin in the final, averaged over 100. Uh, it's only best of seven, but... Um, you know, it's still nice to know that you can yeah, still but... throw. It's important, although the expectation isn't there because I'm not a dart player anymore. No, I'm a but you can still dark. mix it with. You can still mix it, can't yeah, you? Yeah, I still so... want to go up there and, yeah. and make a good account of myself. And back to the original, do I miss it? Yeah, so I, I, I miss, I, I miss the chance to earn the money they're making. That's for sure. Yeah, um, it's insane, isn't it? They're making, they're making great money now. Where in our day, there wasn't really. Well, Phil Taylor was winning all the money, so. Um, yeah, a uh, little bits and bobs. Well, we're going to find out this year how much I miss it because if I can't do a month's practice, you know, four or five hours a day for yeah. a month, <clears> that will tell you, won't it? Any dreams of maybe giving Q School a go next year or over? But that sort of it's in the back of my mind to give Q School one more go just to see, just to see if there's anything left. Yeah, God, the Q School this weekend was insane, weren't it? Do you know what I mean? The amount of quality players that. That haven't got through and haven't got their cards is unbelievable. You can't get anywhere it? near a card. No, you know, no. Guys, guys that you know would potentially go deep in the in the pro tour events. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very tough. But again, uh, that needs looking at. That needs some quality control. I've been I've been following Q School for a couple of years, and I've got 
a bit of a database of players, all the players that have ever played in it and how many legs they've won. Yeah. There's guys, there's guys playing in that have won one leg in two years. Right, yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, you need some kind of quality control. You yeah. Can't, you know, you can't be expecting quality players to be coming through a field of nearly 500 and not expect them to not not be affected by having four hour breaks in between matches. Yeah, it's too days. much, isn't it? Because what time yeah. are some of them finishing? It's obviously was it kicking off at about eleven or twelve, and then like well, some of the results yeah. were coming in at like nine o'clock at night, weren't they? Yesterday, yeah. it's just too much, isn't it? Yeah, and listen, it's no secret. You know, it's the, the environment it's played in. That's a that's a long day for for dark players to be. Um, and playing that kind of distance as well. And that level of competition, that it, it's, it's a bit too much to ask. I think, um, I just, I, I can't see how a, a four-hour gap in between games no. is good for anybody. It ain't, is it? Is there loads, obviously I haven't been there, but is there, obviously with that amount playing and the boards net up, is there loads of other boards for them all to practice? Because if you've got, how many boards are there, Chris? You know, 32. I've never been to one. How many? 32. Is that it? No, and then there's eight. There may have been, I think there may have been 12 practice boards this right. year. Right. But that's still not enough. That's not enough when you could be off for four hours, is it? You've got to be... No. Bloody hell. Yeah, um, it's tough. I mean, I did Q school once, um, and I think I played one day and then went back to my hotel room and went home. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, I, that was nowhere near. I think there was only about 250-ish players oh. in it at the time I tried it. Yeah, it was over 500 this year, wasn't it? It was crazy. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is, the growth of darts over the last 10 years have gone absolutely crazy. What about the next 10 years? How much more can it grow? Is it peaked? Is it going to go into other country? You know, what? how much more do you think it can... Well, it's now going... I mean, it's more and more global. The, uh, the broadcasting partners that Matchroom are bringing in um, Germany now, we waited ages for another country like Holland to, to get the bug they have. You know, the Asian market will be next, which is obviously huge in terms yeah, be massive. of broadcasting and TV rights. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, the bubble's not gonna burst anytime soon. It's just gonna get so bigger. So much the announcement of, I mean, the prize money's not just gone up a little bit. 40%, wasn't it? Yeah, 700 grand. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, million pound in prize money. Oh, no. so, yeah, the, the bubble's not going to burst quite yet. It's in uh, it's in a healthy place. Uh, Barry's, you know, he's, he he never leaves a stone unturned. He's always <laughs> looking for for other markets to, to take the, the product and the brand. Yeah, look at the Premier uh, the Premier League now. I can see going to you know not just other European countries. You know, who knows where it might go? Well, so it's point. in Germany this year, isn't it? It's Rotterdam, yeah, Germany, and, and Holland. Yeah, I mean the, the one in Ahoy in Rotterdam sold out in just a few hours. Ah, oh, so incredible, um, isn't it? And that's before the lineup was announced. Yeah. So that shows you how big the game is. The one in Germany, I'm not sure whether you seen Matt Porter's tweet the other day about um, he was looking at venues and it was I think it was Schalke's venue. The oh, ground. bloody hell! That would um, be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. So it just shows you how, how big <laughs> it is. I mean, some of these Euro Tour events now are being played in front of five and 6,000 people. So, it must be yeah. awesome to be like, uh, obviously from being a dark player when you, um, you know, you were saying how much of a struggle it is now. These these guys are like superstars, mega stars, uh, recognised all over the world now, aren't they? It's, yeah, they've got, they've it's, got, it's got every unbelievable. They've, got, they've been given every opportunity to, be to make it big time. You know, it's, it's not, especially the ones that are now established. Yeah. Um, and get the opportunity to play in all these events. Uh, yeah, if they're doing anything else but but looking after themselves physically, mentally, and practicing art, then well, they get what they deserve. <laughs> well, who do you think then? Obviously, you're on ITV four this week. We've got the Unibet Masters coming up. Who do you think's going to win it? Who who would your money be on? Uh, Michael. Yeah. Um, I think he. Like I said, he would have. He. The reason he's so good is that. Uh, when he does get beat, he goes and readdresses the balance. We've seen him go on these ridiculous uh, streaks. I don't think he's been beaten in three years on ITV4, which is just, again, an absolute mind-blowing stat. Um, yeah, That's insane, so, uh, isn't he? Do you, I, I, I think that, like I say, obviously, as you spoke earlier on in, in, in the interview, and that, he's going to have the... Um, is is gonna have he's gonna want to win it obviously with with Rob Cross winning the worlds isn't he do you know what I mean he's got his back up he's oh. gonna he's gonna be oh, you, there you but he'll go 
I can imagine him sitting at home with bloody steam coming out of his ears. Do you know what I mean? He, oh, you're, not, you're not wrong. He, he is like super competitive. He, he would, um, you know, he, he was not an happy camper when he lost, especially as the fact that he, you know, he almost, well, he had darts to win, didn't he? A bit like Michael Smith. Um, and that is a, that's rarity for, for Michael to have match darts. And, and, and miss. Um, I, 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 was, I was trying to think afterwards how many matches he's lost having had match starts you know it's, it's, you can count them on one hand I one think that he got it like from some of the interview, interviews like at the end of the, the quarterfinals or whatever it was when they said to him and he was like ah oh, but Rob Cross hasn't beaten me yet the amount of times he said yeah but Rob Cross hasn't beaten me yet I think he had it in his not saying because he's such a quality player but I think he's or he knew that Rob Cross has got the game whereas some of them he knows he's beaten before well, he got on there. Close matches, haven't they? Yeah, I think they they played they played eight times last year. Um, uh, Rob beat him in one of the Euro Tour events. Yeah, uh, over in Germany, I think. Um, but when they've met on TV before, he's he's he's, hand, he's handled him fairly easily for someone who's playing at Rob Cross's yeah, level. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I don't, you know, you know, there's, it's not up for debate. That Michael didn't play his best game against no, him in the world uh, and still had darts to beat him, and that that would have frustrated him. And the reason he kept saying to everybody was because there was so much emphasis on Rob Cross. You know, it was every time he was being asked a question, Rob Cross, Rob Cross. Yeah. Right? It must have it must have annoyed him. It but, must have pissed him. Yeah, it must this, have done. This, this guy ain't won nothing. No. No, no, that is stop and talking about it. Is, do you, is he the sort of guy? Obviously, you, you know it. Is he the sort of guy that would have sat at home and watched the world final with like steam in your head and been a bit pissed off, or wouldn't he yeah, watch it? Yeah, I would have said he would have watched it. He yeah, would have done. Um, he, he would have been interested to see, obviously, how Rob was going to respond. Yeah, um, and he responded beautifully. I mean, he, he 107 average, and he, he didn't just beat Phil Taylor; he dismantled. He him. did, didn't he? Uh, and it wasn't like Phil played poorly either. No, didn't Phil um, have about 101 average or 100 average or something, didn't he? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was definitely over 100. So yeah. I think it was more like 102. Um, so, but Taylor's behaviour in that final was a little bit bizarre for me. I'm not quite sure what was. No, I weren't either. That's what, what I said to Laura, my, my wife. We were sitting there and was like, "Don't seem, don't seem." Wrong. I think Taylor, and I have mentioned it in my other videos. Um, obviously, I was a Taylor fan growing up and different things, but. I don't know whether probably right or wrong to say this, but over the last two or three years, I don't think he's done himself a lot of favours because he's done a lot of stuff that he said about that others shouldn't do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it was and very I... much. It was very much over the years that we had, our, you know, we were fairly vocal about Phil, and it was sour grapes. Yeah, uh, which it wasn't really. It was just the fact that you know a lot of it was frustration. Everything was sort of keyed around him, yeah. as it should have been. He was yeah. the best player in the world, and he was our. You know, he was our poster boy then. He was the one that we needed to grow the uh, game. Yeah. All the players needed. We wouldn't be where, you know, what he what he said about darts wouldn't be where it is without me. He's he's a hundred percent right. But yeah. that was a team of people. It yeah. wasn't just him. But without him, no, it wouldn't have happened because you know he he was, you know, he was the one that we all had to beat. And he yeah. he he had longevity. Uh, the, the the quality of darts that he played at was different to anything we'd ever seen, um, but ultimately, you know, there was also things going on behind the scene that we would react to that then were deemed that oh, it's just sour grapes. Where basically he's let his guard down over the last couple of years, and uh, I'm, I, you know, and I, is that just through, said, is that purely through frustration? But he hasn't yeah, got I his. Think so. I think listen, all, all the best sportsmen in the world are all prima donnas. Yeah, you know. There's, they have to have that inbuilt in them. Yeah. Even in the darts or people like Bristow. Yeah. You know, if it isn't all about them, you know, they get the ump about it. Yeah, and, you know, over the years, Phil, for me, Phil should have re re retired after the world match play. Yeah, when he won uh, that, yeah. That would have been, what he, a way to have gone out that would have been and been remembered as well. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Just gone out on a high. Been remembered. Yeah. All that nonsense at the Grand, um, you know, with Daryl Gurney and... Yeah, that the, was a nightmare, and, weren't it? It's, it yeah, just didn't and seem some right. Some behaviour has been quite bizarre for him, and I, I think I think he was just couldn't wait to retire in the end, and now he's off. You know, ironically, he wanted to retire, and two days after the world's finished, he was off to Australia. He's, he's over there for a month, and then he's then he's going off to Japan, and then he'll be playing a lot of soft tip darts. So yeah. I think I think the thing is now is he's going to try and win 
the softed version <laughs> uh, of Dark. That wouldn't surprise. He'll, he'll probably go and do it as well, won't he? He will. Yeah. Well, to be honest, it, it, he's going to have his hands full because although you know he would dominate, you know, the steel tip version of the game over there. Um, they play soft tips, especially in Asia, to a totally different level. It's insane. Is there but, good money in it as well, Enqu? Is there good prize money in soft tip? Yeah, uh, well, there is. I mean, there is. There is fabulous prize money actually on offer, and lots of it. Uh, and it's regular. There's lots of events. Uh, I know uh, Andy Jenkins is playing a lot of it now. As is Adrian Gray, Tony Martin, Anastasia's partner. Um, obviously, Paul Lim. That's where he makes all of his money from. His soft tip darts. Oh. Um, and, and the bigger money from it is endorsements. And obviously, Target are very big in that part of the world. Uh, I know Gary Clever spends a lot of time out there. So in terms of merchandise and you know creating money from his appearances there, yeah, he's going to make a lot of money. And he's, yeah. you know, he's, he played Andy Hammer in the final of an event the other night over there and had 107 plus average. So, you know, the man can still throw. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do now is I've got these questions from the other ones. We're at about 30 minutes on there, so I'm going to try and wrap these up now. So, yeah, um, so first of all, I've got um, a question from Darts Incidents and Moments, and he's saying, do you watch darts on YouTube, and if so, from any particular channels? Uh, no, I just generally, if, if I'm doing a bit of research, I'll, I'll, I'll input the, name of, the, the names of the players that were involved in a match that you know I'm looking for some info on, or if it's a new player... You know, I just tend to just put his name in and, and see, see what, what you I get. <laughs> see what you yeah. get. Probably something totally different sometimes with their algorithms on YouTube. Bloody yeah, hell. Yeah, it's exactly. crazy. It's totally different. Pops up. Um, Darts Life want to know, uh, what do you think of the youngsters coming through like Vandenberg? Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, I like the way he is. Uh, I like his on-stage and off-stage persona. Uh, he's a very, very polite young man. Uh, he's, he's managed by a great company and some, you know, some good friends of mine. So I know he's he's absolutely grounded. And what I like of the fact is when he does play on TV, he almost replicates every performance. Especially the last six months, he's he's found another level. A lot of people were uh, sort of surprised that he sort of made that jump. But all he's basically doing is, is bringing his floor game uh, now onto the stage because. You know, I've, I've said it he stand back and take that deep, deep breath every time, don't he? As well, he just give himself that extra second, don't he? You know, what he, he might be working with a mind coach, or you know, he's just he's just basically readdressing, you know, any any flaws in his game. He's finding out to to get rid of them. I mean, I'm a huge fan, uh, and I, I just yeah, love I like the, him. I love seeing him play. I think it's quality. Yeah, it's like Jamie Lewis. Everybody was surprised I Jamie was. Lewis played so well in the world, but. If you actually watched him play on the floors and in, in other tournaments, he plays to that level most of the time. He's just never been able to make that transition from floor to stage. Although we have seen him play well on TV before, uh, not with that level of consistency. So, yeah, the, the game's in great hands. I mean, there's and there's so many players like that queuing up, waiting for their opportunity. I think there's so many of us, Chris, though, but don't actually get to see the, the floor. All we ever see is, you know, a lot of fans just see him on telly and like, oh, they can't play to that level. Then when they do it, it's a surprise. But to you guys who are at the tournaments and that, see it week yeah. in, week I mean, out. We, we don't we, see we, it and we just judge them off it, don't we? Yeah, we get a great opportunity that I can, I can obviously go to the Pro Tour events yeah. and, and take, take my little notebook around with me and, and, exactly. and follow sort of certain players that... You know, Alan Warren is very good to me in that way because... Obviously, he's part of the PDPA, so he attends a lot of these events, almost all of them. So, you know, he'll mark my card and say, right, you know, go and, have, go and watch him play a few rounds and, and go and have a look at this guy. And, you know, you can just stand behind them and you, you know no. you can watch their, the mechanics of their action and their attitude. So, of course, you see more of their real attitude at these events than you do on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right. And hence all those fines by the DRA. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the next one I've got is um, let's have a look uh, Funky FM wants to know what is your greatest moment of your career and have you got any advice for making this throw more consistent uh, oh, greatest moment I know playing, playing for England was very big and, and not being beaten playing for England um, but yeah I mean there, there's so many so many yeah beating Barneveld when he was going for the, the the three world titles on the spin was a good moment because I actually you know, I went and produced the darts I knew I was capable of. Uh, yeah, just so many. So many. Uh, with regards to making your throw more consistent, just just as, as few moving parts as possible. So, 
Um, you look at players with longevity like Barneveld and Steve Beaton. Model you'll throw on, on actions like that that are just basically up and down there. You know, there's very little can go wrong. Don't tend to worry about if they're not... Worry more about the throw to start with and where the darts are landing. That will come. You know, if you can find a throw... If you, if you throw a dart and you'll throw it at the 20 and you throw three of them and they land in the 13 but all land in a little area like that, that's fine because all that basically doing is means you just got to make small adjustments um, with your line and, and line and length. That's what I keep trying to tell my little boy. He cocks his leg out at the back, he throws, and his leg comes out the back, and he goes forward. Well, Mentor's men, done all right. Now, <laughs> he has, isn't he? That is true. Yeah, he, yeah, do you know what? He did say that to me. Connor said, I said, you've got to keep still. And he went, yeah, well, that means the Sully bitch don't, Dad. He's all over the place. Yeah, is. I mean, ultimately, if you want to throw a hold up under pressure and everything else, it's just. It's just finding a throw that you can consistently replicate over and over and over and over and over. Because all it becomes, I mean, you get some players that are aimers. Yeah. And you get some that are just, just throwers. They throw off muscle memory and instinct. So it's just sort of finding a, a good balance. Yeah. And finding a throw that you can consistently replicate. Thank you. There you go. Um, so we've got four more that we'll rattle through. We've got Gaz Jones. He wants to know, what is the one thing you would like to see happen to improve darts and take the game to higher levels, if that's possible? I think we've covered a lot of that in the video already, but is there anything yeah, I'd else? To, I'd like to see the BDO get their house in order. I feel that there's a place for the BDO in the game. The, the professional side of the game is, is, is sewn up. It's... Uh, apart from the what we spoke about with Q score, I'd like to see some quality quality control in that. Um, I'd like I'd like to see the BDO sort of um, you know regroup, sit down, get some industry experts involved, um, and and do a little bit more for their players because they do have a loyal a uh, loyal following. I mean, there's eighteen hundred county players that play once a month. Yeah, you know, even if you just put put something in place for them and yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, just get, just do a little, work a little bit, uh, not work a bit harder, but get, get the, the right people in involved. Yeah, like what the PDC have got, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, what else we've got? Let's have a look. Paddy wants to know. Um, I know it's often asked for many players, but as a youth player, he must ask, what advice would you give to a youth that are coming into sport? I think we've covered that one again um, a yeah. little while ago. So who else we've got here? We've got Adam. He said, "When you this is a good one. When you were drawn to play Phil Taylor in his prime, did you prepare differently for him in that game than what you would for normal players? Not saying that these are players for normal, but did you prepare differently? <laughs> um, no, you, you, no, not really. Um, if you, if, if the draw was done <laughs> a, a long time no. before it, and you had a lot of time to sort of stew and and think about the match, then yeah, I suppose you would psychologically. But uh, majority of the time, the sort of draw opens up. You look at it and think, oh well, if I get to that sort of point in the in the tournament, I might have to play him. Yeah. Uh, but no, you. What you tended to do, you just tended to try too hard. And he didn't try and get in your head, Taylor, did he? If he, if he knew he was playing, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He, would, he was. He would. He would rattle you around <laughs> in the practice room. He was. Uh, yeah, although he didn't really need to, um, because he was just playing at a, a far superior level on TV than the rest of us. I would never say he was. He, he was just. He was. He was better in all areas, and it wasn't that we couldn't play at that level. We just couldn't play at that level for a week. Yeah. Um, he played at that level for 20 plus years, which is hence the reason he's he's the most successful player of all time and, and ever. I remember. Uh, no, oh, sorry, sorry, carry on. Oh, uh, no one, no one will rival his, his statistics because the game is so different now. I also remember one thing. I don't know whether this is true or not from years ago. I heard somewhere that him and, um, obviously being from the Stoke area, him and Hamilton used to play in practice together. But in the end, Hamilton had to stop doing it because it actually knocked his confidence. Was that true? Was it? Yeah, that, yeah. It right. was? No, yeah, that was true. I mean, oh, I my God. When Andy first came on the scene and I was living, uh, well, I moved up to Stoke to, to practice with Andy. He had, a, he had a pub that didn't really open in the day and he had a room at the back. Uh, and we had it all set up, and it was perfect. Uh, and I practiced with Andy for a, for a good few years, and uh, he then decided that he wanted to try and practice with Taylor, which I'd already done myself years prior to that. Yeah. Uh, and it is hard work. <laughs> I used to go out and practice with him, uh, and we used to play sixty legs, and you know I'd average anything from a hundred to hundred and five, and might get beat. You know, fifty two eight. <laughs> That's insane, isn't it? Yeah. And like yeah, so, he, would, uh, he would hit multiple nine <laughs> darters during that. Would he? 
during one practice session. It was it was ridiculous. How many nine darts have you had before, Chris? And obviously not just on to, you know, but practice oh, and everything. Loads. Yeah, loads. Yeah, have you? probably. Yeah, yeah, over thirty. Bloody easily hell. over thirty. Oh. right. Well, the last. They're, qu- they're, they're not. They're not real nine darts. They're. But you still you, got them in cons- one eighty, and then you hit another one. And you go for the one for one, you know what I mean? I'm out for 26, you hit before the 180. Yeah. Um, you know, Pete, I don't really count them. I don't, you know, I count the ones that I've done in either practice sessions where we've had a marker. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I can think of probably, in actual, like, match play, proper sort of playing game situation, I'm probably about 15. Bloody hell. That is awesome. Bloody hell. I but hit about, was, I hit about 43 darts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the last one I've got here from Lee he wants to know who is going to win more titles Rob Cross or Michael Van Gerwen uh, Michael Van Gerwen I think he'll have a a little bit more longevity than Rob Cross um, I hope not because I'm a huge fan of Rob Cross but uh, he strikes me as it's, he, he's just got to watch that release it's very aggressive yeah. and I do worry he could become injury prone uh, whether he'll have elbow or shoulder problems uh, his throw reminds me a lot of Dave Chisnoy in terms of uh, there's a lot going on at the end of his throw. Um, at the moment, it's fine because you know he, he's, he's still young. He's 27. Yeah, eight um, years to come. Potentially, in a few years' time, he might get injured. I hope not. No, you know, it's not 100 percent it's going to happen. But uh, I, I don't think any. I don't. I, don't, I mean, I don't think. Michael will, will win as many world titles as what people think. No. I've always said I'd be amazed if he won four or five. Yeah, because his target's seven, isn't it? He want to do seven, did he say? Yeah, he won't, he won't win seven. No. He won't win seven. And I don't, you know, I've heard some ridiculous stuff out there. Oh, he win ten, and we win twelve. Yeah. And like, it it's different now, isn't it? There's, there's, there's more, there's new blood. It's hungrier. They're on the boards longer. It's yeah. Do you and know what I mean? Most the guys I was playing with around, you know. At the time when Taylor was in it, with his world titles, but you know it, it was—it's definitely a different level now, and the strength and depth is is much deeper. And, and people don't. The thing is, in our day, we didn't. Our, our one, like we've just seen with a BDO, that was their one chance a year to earn some money. Yeah. That was the same for us. If you want to, if you want a PDC world, although the prize money wasn't particularly great, um, the actual platform that gave you in terms of yeah. Uh, Publicity, sponsorship opportunities, exhibitions, and the prize money was huge for us. Yeah, uh, you know, Alan Warren, Warren, Alan Warren, Little was number one in the world. He was still working. He was a full time psychiatric nurse. Nurse. Oh, so, I. I mean, he he done that throughout throughout his whole time. He was world number one. Do you think that the standard would have been as good back then if it had been practicing the same as what they do now, or has it just? Yeah, absolutely. Listen. Eric, Eric Bristow would have been competitive. He was averaging 100 on them ropey old boards, the same as what we were throwing on. Um, you know, there's loads of examples. You know, I think the modern board has put maybe 10, 12% on mm. averages. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like the Wimo released this Blade 5, which I looked at a while ago um, and measured, and it was on par with the, the Unicorn board in terms of size. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure what's going on with the with the, the, the batch they used at Lakeside, but they certainly weren't the same ones. They were called Blade Fives, but for me they look like Blade Fours that have been rebranded. And I'm not <laughs> sure whether they just decided that the ones they brought out were a little bit too big and they, yeah. they changed their mind and went back to the original size of the Blade Four. Um, you know, beautiful board even when that's said and done. Uh, but yeah, it was um yeah, the equipment they're using today, the opportunities, uh, the technology in the darts. I mean, some of the stuff Target are, are turning out now is just, just insane. Mm-hmm. I mean, as all the manufacturers are, um, the, the, the different types of lathe they can use and the grip patterns. And, you know, I mean, it's literally you can have a, a dart now made which is absolutely bespoke to your it's sort always, of throw yeah. and balance and everything else. I mean, it's we didn't have that in our day. You sort of had a set of plain... <laughs> Bra, um, <laughs> uh, 80% tungsten yeah. and you know that was it you know I, I, my darts are were and all the dynamics distinct. now with the different flights and the way they're set up they weren't all that like you say it was just I uh, remember I, mean, my, I look at my setup now and it, they're absolutely stunning and you know I use that Cosmo fit flight stuff yeah. I mean it's just absolute none of this folded up bent flights anymore you know it's and we, you, you know you just think back what 
the conditions that those players uh, had to play in. You know, the first ever 100 plus average in the World Championship was done by Keith Deller and he lost. That, so that just shows you it does, what, yeah. what the standard was. You know, back was then. Back then. when my dad come around for a game of darts, I always laugh now. I say, "What darts, Johnny, use?" And he says, "No, nah, I bought my own." And he's got these old wooden things, big <laughs> yeah. old wooden things, but they've they've been so worn over the years. There's only like one side with a few feathers on. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. like, I ain't using any of them bloody new ones. It, it, it's made me laugh. It's funny, yeah, but they, the, the game has moved on so much has. in that in that side of the sport, and obviously no more so than, than the dart boards. I mean, I remember. There was an art of it in a 180, and you had to, you know, you did a trouble 20 in one corner, and you'd, you'd have to use the whole bed. You'd have to play across it. They hit 180s now in a line that way. Yeah, it's incredible, is, isn't it? You, know, you could never look at, look at John Lowe's old, you know, the old footage of his nine dollar. His darts almost filled the entire the, bed, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, it's um, incredible. There, there, that, there's an example of what they had to put up with, and they were they were still very very good. And and again, you know. The, you know, it wasn't unheard of to see them roll out sort of, you know, eleven and twelve darters. There was nine darters at them, but obviously not as frequent because they weren't playing as much. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to wrap this up, Chris. I want to thank you so much for coming Absolute on to Darts Panda TV today. You are one of my favourite bloody favourite players growing up, do you know what I mean? So it really is good. Now guys, for you do remember that Chris is um check out um to the point. Um you can search it on YouTube. Sunday nights his show's on. Check it out. Um I'll be promoting it through Twitter and Facebook and my website and everything. Um as always guys I hope that you've enjoyed this interview. Uh please don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and check out dartsplanet.tv. Um cheers Chris, I'll I'll catch you soon. Pleasure, mate. And uh, all those other questions you had people put in, we'll, we'll do another show soon and we'll, we'll quick fire and get through as many as we can. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. And I'll catch Pleasure, you soon. Right. Cheers. Bye.